Angel Baby. Saw him on the Huggy Boy show. Huggy Boy was better than American Bandstand or Soul Train because it was on five times a week, Monday through Friday, Channel 52 out of Corona, before the Little Rascals, Kimba, or even Speed Racer, and always right after school. Ran a mile down Pico from Barando Junior High just in time to see Mr. Oldie's Art LeBeau introduce the Oldie of the Week, which was always Angel Baby, until I got older and it turned into Always and Forever. Better than American Bandstand or Soul Train because it was all Mexican, and sometimes you saw a cholo from down the street or my cousins from El Sereno waving big tattoos and little Chinese eyes made out of big bandanas worn too low on the forehead. And sometimes if he could sneak out of school, I could see my brother in his dark blue khakis riding low on the hip, just like he taught me to wear them. But my mom says no and gives me Miller's outpost corduroys and wallaby shoes from Kinney's in hopes that they'll leave me alone to study. His name was Angel. Know it because he was wearing it on his arm along with the tattoo of a snake, dark brown skin that looks like the color of those little saladitos you'd suck on all day long during the summer waiting for the Helms bakery man to drive up your street. And I swear to God, I would have given up my donut quarter just for a chance to see his tattoo up close. He's dancing with this real skag, the one I call Asco. One of those east side girls that are still teasing their hair like my Aunt Priscilla's been doing since those pictures I saw of 1959. The Dorothy Hamill haircut is the new thing, but the east side girls, they just want to cause trouble. Hang out on street corners with lipstick smeared cigarettes dangling from mouth, teasing their hair higher and higher while Mexican mothers pray their novenas to let that hair fall down. Every show, Art LeBeau interviews a different dancer, and I watch him pick Angel. My brother says, I know that chump. He's a juvie motherfucker, a Romeo stole puppet's girl. Yeah, I think he could have anyone. I turn up the TV set real loud to hear him flash a gang sign and dedicate yet another take to the sky in a natural high bloodstone classic to some stupid chola named after Erica from All My Children. My mom screams, Por Dios, what is this? A bar? Turn that thing off. I'm praying for that tumor in your Auntie Hope's stomach. I've never seen someone like Angel. He's more perfect than any other homeboy on Huggy Boy, and he's got a little mustache like I've been trying to grow. And when he smiles, he's got lips as full as the cherry pickers we see on the grapevine. And he's sweating danger. He's got the hidden scar of juvenile hall or boys camp dripping off of him like only Mexican boys with tattoos have. My mom walks in with a veil on her head and dry tears. She wants to watch the novella. I beg her for just a few more minutes of Huggy Boy, but she's already started to turn the dial to Channel 34 and that stupid Blanca la Inocente the blonde Latina maid living in the attic of a mansion with their blind grandmother, and the baby from the rich ranch owner who's gone temporarily blind in Venezuela when a bull ran him over in the arena. We already know it because we already saw it. I tell her we already seen it, but she says that it doesn't matter that we already seen it because it makes us feel sad and good each time, just like church. We already went to church, but we keep going back because it makes us feel sad and good each time. I think of the devil and smile just to get silently even. I feel so bad thinking of the devil and an angel at the same time.